Shalom, Shalom. We going in here into the Shelby County Correction Facility. All praise to the Most High. We got an invitation to come here and minister to the inmates. So to be the Most High's will. We pray that you speak through us. Use us right now. Pray for us, Israel, so we can keep having more avenues and opportunities to dispense this gospel. Come, Yasharala. Seed, right? So we're not esteeming or exalting ourselves, but Isaac or the Israelites 
whom uh, the Israelites descend from, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to who? Israel. That's where you get the term Israelites from, right? So just kind of want to give you an origin, uh, a synopsis behind where that you know derives from. So again, where Isaac? Uh, give me Matthew 18 and 11. So I put the scripture on the screen. Follow along uh, if you're able to. Right? It says, it's going to read Matthew chapter 18 and 11. Again, we use open Bible. So this is the King James Version Bible. Right? It's the one that closely correlates with the original Greek, the original Aramaic, the original Hebrew, right, that we have in our possession today. Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. Read. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Right? So the Son of Man, who does that represent? Who is that referring to right there? Right, Jesus. I heard somebody say it. So that's Christ. That's Jesus. Right? When you're in the Hebrew. So the Son of Man is coming to do what? Save that which was lost. Now this verse, if you look it up in different versions, I didn't have time to put it on the uh, on the slideshow, but if you look it up in different versions, different uh, variations of scripture, whether it be the New King James Version, whether it be the New International Version, uh, that verse is removed. Matthew 18, 11, Acts chapter 8, verse 37, along with a couple of other verses. Uh, now, I leave that to speculation. I don't want to delve into that. But that's pivotal right there. Those are Christ's words. He said, the Son of Man has come to save what? That which was lost. Right? Give me Matthew 15, 24. Right? So precept must be upon precept. That's how the Bible is decoded. That's how the Bible is demystified. You'll find out. Right? So-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. Right? And that's no slight to any other nationality. These, according to the Bible, are the chosen race. That's why you have the quote-unquote Jewish people today. Right? They profess to be of the chosen lineage, of the chosen seed, but you are the priests and kings on this earth. And it's telling you in the Bible, when you open up and the scriptures are unfolding to you, that this is the reason why the earth is out of course, right? So we're here to restore the order and the balance and the authority of the Most High God with his word, Matthew 15, 24, read it. Matthew 15, 24, but he answered and said, who answered and said, this is red letters here, read, I am not sent, but unto the low sheep, of the house of Israel. Right? So he specifies right there. He says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's come to save that which was lost. Real quick, give me Matthew 1. Right? So we're staying primarily in the New Testament here. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Read that. Matthew 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth the son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Right? So this is the revelation of Jesus. This is the prophetic uh, 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 epiphany, a revelation of Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. For he shall save his people from their sin. There you go. So that's what his name represents. That's what it means, right? To save, right? His name is patterned after Joshua, meaning God's salvation. So he's come to save who? His people from their sin. His people from their sins. That's important. This is prophecy. You can be Matthew 2 and 7. Who are his people? Then Herod. And it, verse 6. Verse 6 reading. And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Right, so out of Bethlehem, Judah shall come a governor. This is the lowest parts of the ghetto, right? These were the, the uh, what, do you, what do they call the name? The slimes, the trap, right? Of uh, slums, right? So they, so they say, out of Bethlehem, Judah, out of a place where you wouldn't think a prophet would arise, right? Shall come a governor of God's people, of his colony, that shall rule what? Shall rule my people Israel. He said, my people who are Israel. Right? One last verse, and then we'll move on. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. Right? So this is pivotal in prophecy. Right? According to the book, if you subscribe to the book, right? We pray that you do. Right? So we thank you uh, for giving you know, us an opportunity to speak with you today and all the, uh, uh, the personnel, the supporters. Right, give us a platform for us to uh, dispense this word here, right? So we pray the most high open your ears to listen, right? Not at us, because we're nothing, right? We're just mere flesh, but the word of God. Romans chapter 9, verse 1, read. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. This is Paul speaking here to the church that was at Rome, right? These were Israelites that were at Rome. He said, I say the truth in Christ. He said, I lie not, read. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Also in the Holy Spirit, my conscience is bearing witness that of what? That I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. So you hear Paul, you're a minister of Christ, right? So he turned this like he did a 180, right? Because he was persecuting Christians, right? So he was killing them, uh, uh, annihilating them, right? That was, his, that was his office, 
right? But then he had an epiphany, right? So he had an intervention, right, on the road to Damascus. Some of us may be familiar with that. So whatever he saw, it was so profound, right? In the revelation of Christ, he said, I'm going to go my entire mission, my life. I'm not even going to lay with a woman. I'm not going to touch a woman until this gospel is fulfilled, right? So this was important for him to write and compose this. He said that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow. He says that my heart, right, read, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. He said I could wish that I was a curse from Christ, right, read, for my brother. He said for my, for my brother, for my brother, you have to have a love and affinity for your people, right? And that's what it's, and that's what it's uh, uh, revealing here today, right, through the scriptures here, read. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, he said, my people, my brother, my kinfolk, right, according to the flesh, read, who are Israelites? He said, what? Who are Israelites? The Israelites matter. It's important to find out who these people are, right? We keep hearing their name being mentioned. All throughout scripture, he said, for my brother, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, he said, who are Israelites? Read, to whom pertains the adoption, to whom belongs, that's what pertain means, to whom belongs the adoption. Read. And the glory. And the glory, right? So we hear the uh, the promises, the kingdom that's to be announced. Who's going to have the kingdom? He says, my kinsmen, my brother, my kinfolk, right? Who belong to whom belong the adoption? What? And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenants, the old and new covenant. Old and new testaments for the Israelites. Old and new testament just means old and new, uh, uh, old agreement for atonement for sins. New agreement for atonement for sins, right? New agreement is through Christ. The old agreement was through uh, blood sacrifice, through the uh, animals, read. And the service of God. And the services of God belong to this people, read. They were to be a light to the Gentiles, to the whole earth, read. And the promises. And the promises were given to you. Go ahead. Whose are the fathers? Uh -huh. and, of, and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came. And uh, as whom concerning the flesh, right? We haven't even dealt into the spirit. He said concerning the flesh. I got to establish this point. It's what Paul is saying here that Christ came for these people. Read. Who is over all? God bless forever. Amen. Right? So who is over all? Amen. All right. Uh, you move to the next slide for me. So what we got up here is the 12 tribes of Israel for reference. Right? And this is according to what? Uh, really all throughout. All throughout the scriptures you find. They're mentioned in the New Testament, I think. Kyle is going to go into that portion in Revelation chapter 7. So you have Benjamin which represents the Jamaicans. You got Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans, right? Manasseh, which are the Cubans. Asher, representing Brazil and Venezuela. And so uh, these are just, how would you say it again? Just a microcosm, right? right? Uh, on a larger scale of who these people are. Now, we won't know until that exact day, but we know according to certain signs, certain descriptions in the Bible, namely Deuteronomy 28, which is what you're going to go into, Deuteronomy 33 and Leviticus 26, that uh, the people that have been dispersed to these lands and outcasts scattered throughout the, the whole region, right? Uh, the extremities of the earth, right? So you have Asher, which represents Brazil, Venezuela, Levi are the, from Haiti, are the Haitians, Naphtali, Chile, Argentina, Issachar, so called Mexicans. Issachar name mean, uh, uh, biblically, he is high, right? So all the construction work, all the strenuous labor, right? It's attached to them. You can find that in Genesis 49. Judah, which be the so-called blacks, African Americans, the Negroes. Christ sprang from the tribe of Judah, right? Uh, one of the disciples. Let me get this. Acts chapter thirteen, verse one. I might get a little graphic. Excuse me. Nigger is in the Bible, right? And we're going to see one of the prophets was called Nigger. Acts chapter thirteen, verse one. Read. And now, there, now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers and Barnabas. And Simeon, right? So there were certain prophets and teachers at Antioch, right? And I think they even named the region of Tennessee after that. So it said there were certain prophets and teachers, one named Barnabas, who accompanied Paul, read. And Simeon. Uh -huh. And Simeon Peter, read. That was called Niger, right? Now you pronounce it like that, Niger, right? From Nigeria, right? But the slang terminology, the Ebonics form, that was Nick, right? Read that again. And Simeon that was really like how we know it. Right. And Simeon that was called nigger. That was called nigger, right? Is that it on it? Yeah. Okay, you try that. Alright, so Judah, right? Um, I feel like there's some I want to something else want to not miss anything on Judah in particular. Well we know Christ sprang up. We need Hebrews 7 and 14. So that's the tribe Christ came from. And people say it don't matter, it don't matter what he looked like. I would I could accept that 
argument if it wasn't already written, right? So if it wasn't uh, important, why would he leave, you know, that note of where he descended from, who, which people he came from? Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14, read. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Right? So it's evident, it's already known, it's manifest that our Lord sprang out of who? Judah. Out of Judah, read. This tribe Moses spent nothing concerning priesthood. Right? So we're going to get into the image a little bit here to dispel some of the lies that have been propagated throughout the earth concerning our Lord. But it's evident, according to the scriptures, that he sprang out of Judah. He could have came out of any other tribe. He could have came as any other race or nation. It tells you in the Bible, Genesis 10, that there's, what, 18 nations on this earth. Right? Even out of city, even so-called white people, so-called Europeans, they descend from Abraham. Right? And Isaac. Right? But remember, uh, there were twins in Rebecca's womb. And they strove together and said, two nations are going to war and clash and collide against each other. Right? So, and I'm going to make this, I'm going to take the time to make this disclaimer now. So we're not a hate group, not racist, um, uh, not to denigrate any nationality or, you know, culture or civilization. We're just bringing out the word, thus saith the Lord. Right? So that's it. We're just ministers. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 4. Did you finish that? Okay. So that's Judah, the so-called Negroes. Christ came out of Judah. Uh, you got Zebulon. You got Gad. Right? You can see him on the screen here. Uh, Gad would be the so-called Native Americans, indigenous, even over here to this uh, to this land, to this landmass here, you know, what they call America, and you can read about that in the Apocrypha, uh, which this book that we have up here, uh, this is the 66, the Old and New Testament, as well as the 14 books of the Apocrypha. That makes a complete Bible, right? And it's interesting, it's kind of intriguing that some of the Apocrypha books, Apocrypha means hidden, is contained in the Catholic versions of the Bible. You ever visit a Catholic church and you look at one of their Bibles, um, um, it say you'll find some of the other books that's contained within the Apocrypha in their records, right? But you got Reuben, right? Seminole Indians, you even down in Australia, you got Negroes, and these are all Negroes here. You got Negroes everywhere, right? Negro here, Negro there, Negro everywhere, right? So Simeon uh, makes a sign, like the Dominican Republic, and then again, uh, okay, we already blew all 12 tribes. All right, so our doctrine, like I said, I want to differentiate between the different uh, Hebrew Israelite sects, you know, that you may come from. You know, there's different groups, different camps as we're organized. But uh, it's centralized in, in keeping the commandments of God in the faith of Christ, right? So our doctrine, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 2, just to summarize, so this is from our organization. Who is that up there? That'd be a guy here right there, little man. I'm baptized, you ain't. Okay. Um, and so this is, you know, these are some of the older pictures that we have. But, you know, we gathered here. I don't know if I established that earlier. We're here in Frasier, in the heart of Frasier. Uh, that's where the Most High planted uh, uh, our spirit to go ahead and minister and cultivate a uh, harvest over there. Uh, and if it be his will, we'll go anywhere he sends us, right, even here. Uh, but our doctrine is baptisms, right, both physical and spiritual. So we do water baptism. Spiritual baptism is the cleansing of the word. You have to continue to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the cleansing of the word, right? And then we do an outward, you know, manifestation of public declaration of, uh, of, of an inward conversion by way of uh, subversion, physical baptism. The laying on of hands, prayer, uh, uh, spiritual healing, you know, like I said in James chapter 5, of any sickness or ailment, right? Resurrection of the dead, right? And so when it comes to that, we may not be physically raising the dead yet, it could be the most I will. There may come a time when we have to harness that power, right? But our faith has to get there. We're not there yet. Uh, but as far as raising up the dead, give me Proverbs 21. You know what I'm in verse 16? The congregation of the dead. 21 and 16. So the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment, right? So this is the doctrine, the principles of Christ that he laid behind for his disciples to continue all the way until his coming. So I'll just read this proverb. Is that it? I'm a little rusty. Okay, read it. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Right. So scripture is saying that the man that wanders out of the congregation, but out of the way of understanding, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Right. You heard the name C the Walking Dead. Right. For the vast majority, that's us. Right. So we're deprived. We're devoid of spirit. Right. So um, we've been largely desensitized, dehumanized. 
uh, criminalized, all these things, right? So we've suffered these exploits and these detriments, right? It's because we failed in our understanding. What did he say in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6? A lot of us have heard this quote before. All right, so we'll read it. I'll get you to get the uh, next slide. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, read it. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. There it goes again. My people. Right? Wait, read verse 1. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. To see who this uh, letter is being addressed to. Read. Hear the, okay. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Who? Ye children of Israel. Right, so you hear this message being repeated to the children of Israel, right? Which we just went over in the previous slide, the 12 tribes of Israel. Right? That's who you are. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1, it says what? Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Right. Okay. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. I'm delivering you a message, read. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Right. Just as it was then, so as it is now. He has a controversy with the uh, citizens and the inhabitants of this land. Read. Because there is no truth. Because there is what? No truth. There is no truth. Right. Read. No mercy. No mercy. No right. Don't, people don't have compassion or don't have uh, uh, sincerity and kindness and affection for one another. That's gone. Like what does it say in Matthew chapter 24? It says that uh, iniquity, because iniquity shall abound, what does it say? The love of men is going to wax cold. So uh, God is, is, is furious. Why? Because it says that in the inhabitants of the land, there's no truth, no mercy, nor what? No knowledge of God in the land. Right? So they're outright defying God, saying that he doesn't exist. Right? Uh, read verse 6. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Right? So he says, my people, there it goes again. Remember we established in verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord who? You children of Israel. It says, my people are destroyed. Why? Right? For the lack of knowledge. For the lack of knowledge, read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Right? So as you can, some will say that God is petty here. Right? If you reject him, he don't reject you. Right? Read. That, th that thou shalt be no priest to me. Right? But understand, he gives you a way out. He says that his hand is always still stretched. Right? So there's hope. Right? Read. So even though we rejected him, right, by uh, 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 exposing ourselves to perverse knowledge, being corrupt, right? Read. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forgive thy children. So that's why our children are here. That's why our children are here. There's a crisis on our children. Even. Give me Isaiah 5. Because of this knowledge, we've gone into captivity. And that's what uh, my brother Kyle has been expounding on. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Read. Isaiah 5, 13. Therefore, my people are gone to captivity. Uh -huh. Why? Because they have no knowledge. Right? Captivity meaning bondage, servitude. Right? Why? Because what? Because they have no knowledge. Because we have no knowledge. Read. And their honorable men are fed. Right? So our honorable men who, you know, we look to who have, uh, who are prestigious, who got status, celebrity status, said they're famous. They don't have knowledge. They shouldn't be the leaders. Right? The, you know, strictly off of their riches, right, or their substance. Right? Some of them have perverse lives. And that's not to, you know, denigrate them. But they're miserable too. Right? Because they're void of knowledge, right? We have to have the pure knowledge of the word, read. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Right? And their multitude is dried up with thirst. We're hungry, we're thirsting after righteousness, after the knowledge of God. Right? Which is going to transform uh, uh, these elements, right? This whole earth. Go ahead and move to the next slide. So that's our doctrine that we teach right there. The commandments of God. Which you can read in Exodus chapter 20, verses 3 through 17. Thou shalt not, well, thou shalt have no other gods. Before me, right? The most high power, he's a jealous God. Right? He says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And that expounds to go into uh, for service, excuse me, for worship. So you shouldn't worship any object, anything created in the, uh, 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 in the heavens, on earth, or within the seas. Right? So you have other nations, different religions, cultures, and, 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 and uh, thing, ethnicities like that. They have their own gods that they give reference to. Right? But he says that you're not to worship that. He says, I'm the spirit. Right? So we worship the God which dwells in heaven. There's no facsimile or object you know, that you can make a replica of him out of. Right? That goes for the Christian cross. Right? So that goes for the statues. Right? Um, so it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Give me for that one. Give me Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30. And I think there's another one in uh, Hosea. I just get Proverbs chapter 30. You know what I want, verse 9? 
Um, so this is what King Solomon, right, the wisest king on earth, right, was an Israelite. He came from the tribe of Judah, right? That was David, his father. Read. This is what he had to say. Proverbs 9, verse 30. Let's not be, now read verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Right, so Solomon said, remove far from me vanity, meaning falsehood and lies. Read. Turn me neither poverty nor rich. Right, so he understood in his wisdom because he possessed everything. Anything that we could ever imagine that we want, that we covered after. Right, he said, he said, give me neither poverty nor rich. He said, give me balance. Right, read. Feed me with food convenient for me. He said, feed me with food convenient for me that's necessary for me. Right? Don't let me have excess in either direction. Read. Lest I be full, full, and deny thee. Right? He said, lest I be full and deny thee. Right? Because what happens? When he starts increasing our substance, our material possessions, our wealth, our status, then we, we tend to forget about the most high God who blessed us with those things. Right? He said, so even Solomon said, lest I be full and deny thee. It's just, it's embedded within us. Right? It's instinctual to us. Right? And when we're blessed with a lot of substance, we forget our Creator. Read. And say, who is the Lord? And say, who is the Lord? Right? So you don't want to be guilty of saying that. Read. At least I be poor. He said, unless I be poor, I don't want to be impoverished now. Let's what happen. And steal. Uh, and do what? And steal. Which is one of the commandments. And steal. Read. And take the name of my God in vain. Right? So that's taking the name of God, his reputation. Because Israel means prince of the most high God. And he stamped that on you. That's your name. He sold his name in you. You have a purpose. You have destiny. You have a high calling. So he says, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Right? Uh, what, is that? what else does it say? The fourth command. Remember the Sabbath day. To keep it holy. I'll pray. So I just want to ask real quick, when is the Sabbath day? Saturday. On Saturday. Y'all already know. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Right. That's the Sabbath. Evening to evening. Right? But we just had that discussion before in class. Darkness was first. Right? That gets deep. Right? You want to stay in that bed not do Right? Or he said, remember the same. Why do you have to say remember? Because somewhere down the line we forget. Right? It will become obscure. Right? We would uh, be negligent towards observing the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Right? Honor your father and your mother. Right? That's self-explanatory. Thou shalt not kill. We know that translates to murder. Right? We understand about defense and protection. Right? If you need to. But thou shalt not murder. Right? With premeditated. Right? With the intent to harm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Right? So that's uh, another man laying with another man's wife. Right? See some sisters in here, or a, a, a woman man with, uh, how am I saying, another woman's husband, right? So thou should not commit adultery. That's a covenant, right? That's a soul tie, right? And so that covenant is so serious, it represents the union between who? God and his church. That's right. So we see thou should not steal. That's self-explanatory. Uh, thou should not bear false witness against thy neighbor, right? To lie, false accusations, right? So. Some of us, I'm, I'm sure all of y'all can attest and be on the other side of being falsely accused and maligned. Right? You don't like that, do you? So he gave us a commandment not to do that to one another. Right? So these are civil laws on how we can govern ourselves in peace. Right? In rectitude. He said, Thou shalt not covet. Amen. Right, come. Go ahead. Ah. Yeah, we can. Go ahead. All right, so again, the commandments from Leviticus chapter 11, Deuteronomy 14. This is for reference, clean and unclean animals, right? So what we have up there is clean, uh, beef, chicken, uh, that type of poultry. Uh, let's see, we got lamb. Lamb, good job. Uh, quail, let that go. Bison, deer. Now what's unclean? Right, according to Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14, swine is an abomination. Right? So there ain't, ain't no pets me that swine, my brother. You can't have it. <laughs> um, right, so no pig, no, what was it, ham hock, no. Oh, you know what? Yeah. No pig. Right, no pig, right, no, no shit. That's what it's called. Uh, none of that, so you already know what that is, right? Uh, anything else? So no pork, no shrimp, no uh, lobster, no crab, right? So all these things are abominable. Only fish. 
The only fish that's permitted that's allowed is those with fins and scales. Right? So you got your salmon, you got your what uh your perch. It's a lot of this question, but it's clean though. Well you got what you got cod, um, Okay, okay. Y'all get the idea. Go ahead and hit the next slide. I see a snake up there. They're not being no snake. Alright, so again, we're speaking on the commandments of God. Simple commandments, but uh, this is important. Give me Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5. Right, even the least commandment, something as small as even growing your beard, man. Right? So that's biblical. Uh, and even shaving your head off. Right? So we'll get that Matthew chapter 5, break one of the least commandments. Why is this so important? Why are we going to yeah. Is that it? I'll be. Where are we verse 17? No. Start verse 16. Let the light so shine before. Where, where are you coming from? With the uh, chapter, book chapter verse. No, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let the light so shine before me. Right. So he commanded for the Israelites. This is Christ speaking. Let your light shine before me. You're supposed to be the example on this earth, free. That they may see your good works. They may see and behold your good works, read, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Right? So when they see you, they're supposed to glorify God. So Christ is supposed to uh, emanate from you, right? And so if we, and that's what Kyle's wanted to, if we have a sense of identity and purpose, we wouldn't feud, right, against one another like we do. We wouldn't have that animosity and strive against one another because, uh, you know, we see the light within one another, right? We see the importance and the value Read. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Christ said, think not that I've come to destroy the law. Right? This is for the pastors. Think not that Christ came to do away with the commandments for the law. Read. Or the prophets. It says, or the prophets. Anything the prophets spoke. He said, I didn't come to undo. I didn't come to uh, 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 destroy. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right? Fulfill everything that was written of him. Right? That's Acts 3 and 18, Luke 24 and 44. Read. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So Christ said, till all be fulfilled, everything that was written, right, which is, uh, uh, that's God's thoughts, that's his words being established, is permanent, right? He says, it will be fulfilled, it must be fulfilled. Even Christ himself couldn't alter it. So what he fulfilled was the sacrificial law so that it wouldn't be a burden on us to offer an animal sacrifice when we could be seen. Right? That's all that is. That's all Paul, with his 13 epistles, was going into where it gets misconstrued about the law being done away with. Right? Christ is now that sacrifice.